property, guys. So the next common tendency that we're gonna be talking about is not quite having that consistency on the third shot drop because we're settling for a half volley. So what that means is if the ball's coming in, so we've served, they've hit their return. If we're taking the ball right off the short hop every single time, that ball is accelerating into the paddle. That's gonna be the most difficult time for us to be able to maneuver the softness and the height on the shot. So what we wanna do is we wanna prepare our body to get in the perfect position to where we can take the ball after it bounces sits up at the apex and even maybe starts coming slightly down. That's gonna be when the ball's decelerating, it's much easier to have the, the percentages be high on our third shot drop when we're putting ourselves in that position to be taking the ball when it's decelerating um, rather than when it's accelerating into the paddle. Thinking about, think about your organization um, for your drop should be like a math equation. and Things have to be correct from start to finish. Meaning after you serve, you're taking a look to see where, where your opponent hits the return. Right? And, you're, and you're buying yourself time. So that's step one. You're getting yourself back, you're giving yourself spacing, and then from there you're getting the paddle back, you're, you're getting everything organized. So just keep in mind that uh, when you give your space, you have more time to work with, mm. uh, you have more time to get organized, you can see the ball a little better, you have more time to get comfortable. All in all, good things happen when you give yourself time. But don't forget that the preparation for all strokes in pickleball are like a math equation. Things have to be correct from start to finish. And I think the big thing is, is you need to know what you're preparing for, and that's why we're gonna take you through some drills to help you uh, be able to recognize where you wanna make contact with the ball as far as the timing off the bounce. I think the only um, you know, time in which you would wanna take a half volley yep. is if your mobility doesn't allow you to back up yep. or maybe that's not comfortable for you to make right. those back pedal steps. Um, so, so just keep in mind that if your body allows you to and you feel like you're, you're agile and you're athletic and you can get back and scramble, I would say you should give yourself time and, and let the ball set up to the apex. If you're in a position where maybe you're a little older, maybe you have a hard time getting back, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with taking a half volley. Okay guys, first drill here, Coach Kyle is going to be at the baseline, he's going to be acting as a student, I'm going to be at the kitchen line, I'm going to be acting as a teacher. Uh, Coach Kyle is going to serve cross court, after he serves cross court, I can then underhand feed or I can feed off the paddle, okay? When I feed, I'm going to push him back, he's going to say uh, two things and then he's going to trap the ball. He's going to say bounce, apex, and then he's going to trap. Yep. Okay, so that's our, that's our first progression here. Kyle, go ahead. Okay, here we go. Serve, I feed. Bounce, apex. Perfect, okay. okay. Again, Serve. again, again. Bounce, apex. Perfect, perfect. Um, so guys, just keep in mind that when you're at the baseline, you're gonna say bounce, apex, and then you're gonna catch, okay? okay. Here we go. Kyle's gonna serve. Right after he serves, I'm feeding. Bounce, apex. Beautiful, he's giving himself plenty of space. Um, I'm, I'm sure you're recognizing that we're on a court that's a little smaller. <laughs> so as you see, Kyle's back in the rocks there, that's okay. Serves, feed. Bounce, apex. Perfect. So we, we really just want you getting comfortable uh, with understanding where the apex is, um, you know, getting comfortable with the movement going back, giving yourself enough space, um, being in a good athletic stance. Second progression here is going to be uh, the same idea. He's going to say bounce apex, but now he's going to hit a drop in the kitchen. So bounce apex and then drop. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Bounce apex. Okay, very good, very good. Bounce apex. Beautiful, good. Again, again, again. Here you go. Here you go. Same thing, he's giving himself plenty of space. Bounce, apex. Yeah, I think something that you'll recognize in this drill that you have a lot more time than you think. I think that's just a common theme in pickleball. Like you don't, re you don't really realize how much time you actually have. So when you give yourself space and you let the ball sit up to the apex, you're gonna start thinking to yourself, shoot, I have a lot more time than I think. Okay guys, uh, next progression here, a third drill here. Um, so now Coach Kyle is gonna be in a position where he doesn't have time to scoot back. Okay, um, so um, whether he doesn't have time because my return is penetrating and pushing him back or simply he's just not mobile enough to get back. Right. That's when he's gonna settle for a half volley. Um, Kyle, from a, from a technical standpoint, what would you do differently on a drop that you had more time on yep. and that you gave more space on versus a half volley drop? Yeah, so uh, my follow through, my point of uh, finishing the shot 
uh, is going to be a little bit different. When I'm dealing with a floaty, loopy return that I'm playing after the ball has, has hit its apex, I might follow throughout to about my belly button or maybe that second imaginary ball. As there's an exceptional amount of pace and depth coming at me, when I play it as a half volley, I'm just going to lift up with my legs but pretty much stop at the point of contact. Maybe, yeah, almost uh, almost kind of treat it like a dink. It's like Pretty a modified much, yeah, dink. Yeah, because there's enough pace coming at me. I don't need to provide any more oomph. I just need to be secure and stable. Tyson's providing the pace. I don't need to add anything extra. Yeah. And then, I mean, tell me, like, what, what, what would you say the biggest common tendency is why there's so much inconsistency with the half volley? Just too much wrist or too much, too much swing, not gauging how much pace is coming at him? A mixture of those things? Yeah, I think one, recognizing that you need to make a change. And then I think there's a few things. I think the take back may be a little bit too far. We For talked sure. about the over follow through. And then I think anytime people panic, because they're surprised, and with a you know hard deep return, sometimes we are surprised by that. Our panic button is the wrist. Okay, exactly. so we want to stay uh, locked. We want to be secure. We want to be uh, pretty upright for the half volley, mm -hmm. and just remember that there's pace coming at us. So if we angle the paddle face up and don't try to do too much, that's going to keep the ball in play and keep it over the net. For sure. And I, I think too something to think about is when you hit a uh, uh, you know half volley as the third, usually you're having to hit a fifth as well. For right. Sure. Why? For because sure. it's very difficult to be offensive with a drop as you're hitting a half volley. Yeah, I think right. if I'm trying to avoid or hit such a perfect shot where I'm trying to avoid having to hit another shot in transition as a fifth, I'm probably trying to be a little too cute with this. I need yeah. to recognize they just hit an exceptionally hard, deep return. My job is to get the ball over the net. It might take me a few more shots to neutralize, but I do not want to miss in the net and give it away right here. Okay, go ahead, bud. Okay, um, go. So serving. Uh, yeah, work on that half volley, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna find your backhand now. <laughs> uh, yeah, all day long. It's, it's, it's always there, Tyson. What can I say? <laughs> uh, sweet, sweet. That's it. Good. Gotta like it. Okay, guys, game here. Um, so, so for for lower levels, um, we're gonna say that you have to make 60% of your third and fifth combos. Okay, 60%. Um, so I'm gonna be acting as a returner. Coach Kyle is going to be um, acting as a server. Um, he has to hit a third and a fifth, okay? Um, he's, he's looking to buy himself time on his third, and then when he comes in transition, obviously he's going to have less time. He's going to have to figure out how to hit a fifth shot drop. Um, he, gets, he gets one point for making a third and a fifth combo, yeah. okay? On the third, Tyson's going to give me a very cooperative feed. I will have time to let the ball come up to the apex, start on its way down, uh, and it's the easiest shot to play as it's decelerating. As I get into the transition zone and play a fifth, just know that the mindset has to change a little bit where I'm looking to take the ball either out of the air as a block or right as a half volley. If I'm waiting for the apex at this point, the reason that's a bad thing is I'm going to have to retreat often in order to catch the ball at the apex. I've earned all this space forward. I don't want to be quick to give that back. So I'm, uh, I'm adjusting and modifying when I'm playing my fifth shot more as a half volley. Okay. So uh, first of 10 points, here we go. Okay. okay. I'm feeding. I'm being cooperative. Here's his third. There's his fifth. And he makes it. Okay. He gets one. He's one okay. for one. Here we go. Um, again, again, again. Here we go. Good, there's one. Okay, beautiful. Two for two. Do you want Very to put good. one at my feet on the fifth on yep, this one? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so drop did not land in the kitchen. Okay. That, is that, that is out, correct? Yep, yep. Out. Okay, so drops have to land in the kitchen here. Score is one, uh, one to two. One, one to two here. Here's this third. Has to land in the kitchen. There's this fifth. Beautiful. Okay, and um, I can mix up my fourth ball. So sometimes I may try to go through him force him to take a volley out of the air, or sometimes it may take a little pace off and go at his feet, okay? okay. Um, just lower levels, just know that this person is gonna be probably hitting it like 40%. So keeping track of how many balls out of 10 Kyle makes here with a third and a fifth combo. Yep. So uh, score is? So I'm three out of four right now. Three out of four, here we go. Three out of four. Okay, that was back. Three out of five, here we go. Ball has to land in the kitchen. You can give yourself height, beautiful. Get over. Okay, here we go. Uh, three out of six. Yep. Three out of six. Here we go. Ball has to land in the kitchen. Beautiful. Okay, very good. I like it. Four out of seven. Okay, I'm Four taking eight. it. <laughs> Four out of eight. Beautiful. Good. Five out of nine. Okay, 
Six out of 10, beautiful. Okay guys, uh, the game that we're gonna do, very similar to the drills, we're just putting it into a live point setting. This is gonna be for higher levels. So I'm gonna be at the kitchen line, I'm gonna feed Tyson a, a, a cooperative feed here. He's going to play a third shot, work his way in and try to play a fifth shot as well. So both of these first two shots have to land in the kitchen and at that point, we're gonna be live and just play out the point. Because I have a pretty big advantage already being established, we're gonna play a game to seven, but I'm gonna spot him three points uh, right at the start here. So it's gonna be zero, three. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, perfect. We're live. Okay. Play it out. Okay. Good point, good stuff. Okay, one to three. Another one. Ready? I'll give it to you. Close. <laughs> <laughs> two, three. Okay. Nice. Zero six. Here we go. Oh, uh, let it go. Let it fly. <laughs> <laughs>